What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at it again with another video, man. So, I know we didn't stream Monday Night Raw like we usually do. Well, we haven't streamed it in a couple weeks, actually. But today we didn't stream it because, you know, today is Labor Day. And uh, we kind of just wanted to take a break uh, today and, you know, trying to kind of chill with our families, relax, not really worry about too much content related stuff. So, that's the reason why we didn't stream this particular week but uh i think we may end up streaming next week so we'll keep you guys posted but i wanted to definitely check uh check out some of the things off camera uh whenever you know i got back home and that's what i did checked out you know some of the highlights for monday night raw and i had to talk about main event jay uso starting off monday night raw i really wanted to get into that um i will say this it is it's really truly amazing to see his progression from being which uso is that to now people knowing he's main event j and calling him main event j and getting reactions that a main eventer should get and it's it's so dope to see his progression over these past few years when he came out his music hit came through the crowd crowd went crazy they're doing the up and down movement you know it, it's become a thing now you know the whole crowd was doing it it was just beautiful to see how hyped people were and he started off monday night raw by himself and i like how michael cole on commentary even mentioned cody's past he said uh michael cole mentioned uh that cody being an evp was you know has his perks or whatnot and him being an evp in the past he didn't mention the company but in the past kind of gave him uh you know the ability to get things done behind the scenes so i like that they mentioned that that was a that was a cool little moment or whatnot once again didn't have to mention the company but if you know you know he was an evp in AEW. so that's how he was able to get jay to come back into wwe and be on monday night raw um uh, jay and you know you could see he was kind of excited you know emotions were flowing because the crowd was just giving him love man and um at one point when he starts off in his promo he uh he decides to talk about look i know i have done some things in the past and i know there's going to be some people in the back that don't like me but you know where to find me. I'm solo dolo. I'm right here on Monday Night Raw. I'm not going nowhere. And I like that they mention that because Jay has been a thorn in a lot of people's sides since he was part of the bloodline. Jimmy and Jay have cost, and Solo at some point, have cost a lot of superstars their opportunities at winning championships or beating Roman. And it, it's good to have that continuity. Now that he's a babyface and all this other stuff, People shouldn't forget what he's done. And I like that. So I like that he mentioned that. I know I don't have a lot of friends here. I know I got some enemies in the back, but you know where I'm at. And then, of course, Sammy comes out. Sammy comes out. Huge, huge pop. Obviously, they have so much history together. And seeing them in the ring together, it, 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 it's, it's like a full circle moment. Seeing them in the ring once again and... You know, you had the Usi chance going, and this is the benefits of long term booking. Because of that, Sammy trying to be into the bloodline storyline and how all that played about, and how Jay was one of the last people to finally embrace Sammy. Like all of that playing out, all of the the goods, the bads, the in betweens, the storyline that they they told these past few years. Seeing them in the ring once again. It was just a it was a good moment and and that's the benefits of having long term booking and and good storytelling to the point where you see some people who have history who's you know had their issues in the ring together you know it 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 was such a good moment to see that um Sammy also giving the same sentiments that Jay was saying like look there's some enemies in well you're gonna have some enemies in the back there's a lot of people out there that do not like you they're not cool with you from stuff that you've done with the bloodline but he came out there to let him know i am happy that you're here i am proud of you i am proud that you finally broke free i am proud that you're standing on your two feet and sammy very good at promos and 
giving that emotion. And he, he was really in his bag here. And he's like, I just want you to know, man, like you're finally living out what I've always knew that you had inside. You are finally living out being the main event, Jay, that I've always known you could be. It was a really good promo, really good moment. Jay, I'm uh, not Jay, uh, Sammy offers to shake uh, Jay's hand, but Jay doesn't do it. So he's like, all right, well, if you ever want to talk, you know where I'm at, I'm here. And as he's about to leave, Jay's like, wait, come here. Come here, Sammy. So Sammy comes back into the ring. He's like, that wasn't very Usy of me, was it? And once again, another good callback. Usy chance going in. Love that. You know, that wasn't very Usy of me not shaking your hand or whatnot. And Jay extends his hand and Sammy comes in for the hug, man. Crowd going crazy. Loved it. It was it was just a good, good little moment. You know, if there's anybody that was gonna meet Jay when he first came back. It had to be Sammy. So, as they're about to leave, as they're about to leave, Drew McIntyre comes out there. They're about to have their match. Drew and uh, uh, Matt Riddle. Drew music hits. He's walking out. He walks up the entranceway, and Drew is staring a hole into Jay because, once again, they have cost him from becoming the Universal Champion. He didn't forget. So, Drew's out there like damn near about to he about to throw them hands. Sammy comes back out like this is his first day. Let's not do this right now. So Drew walks off. Jay standing his ground, not running away or nothing. Obviously, once again, he has to deal with the consequences of the issues, you know, the stuff that he's done with his family. He has to deal with those consequences. Now that he's by himself, everybody's not going to forget. Matt Riddle comes out there. Matt Riddle sees him. And he's not smiling. He's not doing the bro stuff. He's just looking right, staring a hole through him, too. Because, once again, they have cost him, Jay and Jimmy have cost him an opportunity to be the universal champion as well. And per storyline that we're still going off of, um, the bloodline was the reason that Randy Orton was written off TV. They took him off TV. They injured him. So... Matt Riddle has some issues, and Sammy is out there trying to, not right now, it's his first night, let's not do this now. Sammy being the, the peacemaker in this situation, and Matt Riddle walks away. And I like that, and I hope they keep expounding on that and keep bringing that up. He has enemies. Yes, he's, he's not aligned with his family no more, but that don't mean nothing. If you've done me wrong in the past, I'm not just going to be so forgiving. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they plan that going forward, but I like the continuity there. I also want to talk about just a little bit of the Judgment Day stuff. I'm not really going to go into it uh, in great detail. Judgment Day comes out there, chorus of booze. They have all the gold. They dripping, dripping in the gold, talking about, you know, we want, we run WWE. We got the gold or whatnot. And, you know, Finn Balor giving out his thanks and appreciation to everybody. He even gave his thanks and appreciation to JD. And then Rhea says something very interesting. She says, you know what's grinding my gears? She didn't say that verbally, but word for word. But you know what's annoying me is the fact that Everyone's supposed to be talking about what the Judgment Day has accomplished, but instead they're talking about Jey Uso coming to Monday Night Raw. They shouldn't be talking about that, you know. They, she has some issue with that. If anything, they should be talking about the Judgment Day. The bloodline has fallen, and the Judgment Day is the most dominant faction in WWE, which, as of right now, they are. <laughs> it is no question Bloodline was for many years, but now it's the Judgment Day. So then JD comes out. Oh, what not? Damian Priest is getting kind of annoyed. Like, what you out here for? He comes out. He's holding something. He's holding something in his hand. A bag in his hand. He, JD wants to show his appreciation or whatnot. He's kind of coming off like, like Sammy was. If you guys remember Sammy doing whatever he can to get into the Bloodline, that's literally... The same story, except with a whole bunch. I mean, well, technically the bloodline was a whole bunch of heels. So, except Sammy was the likable baby face that wanted to be with the cool kids. JD is just a prick in a heel who wants to be 
with the cooler heels or whatnot. So it's kind of the same parallels there, which I find very interesting. Um, JD comes out there. He has something. He's holding something. And he, he tells Damian Priest, you don't need that champ. You don't need that briefcase anymore. JD, uh, Damian Priest about to get upset. And he reveals what was in the bag. JD pulls out a brand new custom money in the bank briefcase. And I'm not going to lie to you. I like it. It says senior money in the bank is in purple. I like it, which leads me to believe he's going to have that for a while because they don't often like it's it. We haven't seen them do like a custom money in the bank briefcase for a particular wrestler in a while. So that means they're going to do something with him. It's been a minute since we've seen, seen that, which means he's going to hold it for a while, which I'm OK with. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how they play this out and when they will have him pull the trigger uh, to cash it in. But I do like the briefcase. I do like the fact they gave him that custom briefcase. It, it gives me good hope that they're, they have some plans for Damian Priest. I will say that. They have some plans for him. Hopefully, it does pan out going forward. So it was cool to see a custom briefcase for the Money in the Bank holder this year. And I do like it. Senior money in the bank. And then Sammy comes out there and he ends up ultimately challenging JD to a one-on-one -on -one match or whatnot. So, but yeah, uh, the reason why I wanted to mention that, that they mentioned Jay, is I do, if they do war games, which I hope they do this year, I do think Jay will be involved in war games. They mentioned him for a reason. They mentioned him for a reason. And... If anything, I would be okay with that if they build towards that. If they did a war games with the Judgment Day members in the match, I'm all for that. I am all for that. If you have Damian Priest, Finn Balor, uh, Dominic Mysterio, and JD, um, should, uh, maybe you add somebody else for it to be like a five on five. You could add somebody else. I don't know. But... Just going off those members, and then you had Jay Uso, um, Cody Rhodes, because he has some issues with the Judgment Day, you know, with Dominic and stuff like that. And obviously, they would have issues with Cody for even bringing Jay to Monday Night Raw. Cody Rhodes, Sammy, and Kevin Owens, and like I said, you can find a fifth member for each respective team if you wanted to. But I do think that. That I hope they bring back War Games. That was really good for Survivor Series. And why not have them be in the second War Games on the main roster? The Bloodline headlined it, uh, headlined it last year, and it worked. Why not do it this year? But with Judgment Day, since they are the top heel faction. And you can tell some interesting stories there leading up to that. So that's... I would, I would like to see that. And I hope that's something that they do, man. But... Overall, uh, from the stuff that I saw on the show, it was okay or whatnot. Uh, I did see the brawl between Shinsuke and uh, Seth Rollins. They finally showed the footage of after the cameras went off at payback. Uh, Shinsuke proceeds to give Seth Rollins the beats after the, uh, the, the main event, which I wish they would have shown that on camera during the show. I think that would have been a nice way to let us know what's going forward. But it seems as if... They're going to potentially have another rematch because pretty much Seth was, he, he just wanted to smoke tonight. And Shinsuke was all about the rogue action. There was a lot of brawls going on between Seth and Shinsuke. Uh, even Ricochet was getting into the mix. So I do believe they're going to probably potentially set some type of rematch. I don't know if it's going to be just a regular match. We'll see. Um, but they do t plan on extending this feud with Shinsuke going forward as it looks. And Gunther versus Chad Gable. Um I, I definitely watched the match. Commercial breaks obviously ruined it. My personal opinion, I think that match should have been on payback. It the match for Monday Night Raw main event was pretty good outside of the commercial breaks kind of ruining the pace and the flow. It was a real good match. But if you know anything about wrestling he was not beating Gunther. <laughs> and the crowd was definitely behind him. He had his family out there or whatnot. As soon as I saw that, them focusing on the family, oh, no, nah, he wasn't winning. And he wasn't winning because Gunther is at some point going to break 
the longest reigning uh, IC uh, champion of all time. I think he's like four days away. I believe Michael Cole had said so. It didn't make sense for him to drop it to uh, Chad Gable. But they did make you believe he possibly could. And once again, Gunther won clean. He didn't have to cheat. He beat him. It was a hard-fought match. And then what's crazy about all of this is when he lost, you can see uh, someone, one of his family members, I'm not sure if that's his daughter or whatnot, Chad Gable's. She was crying, man. I was like, oh, man. Damn, she had to witness a loved one lose. But it's the, it's the story that they were trying to tell. I don't know if they're going to go forward with uh, Chad Gable and Gunther. Because, I mean, Gunther beat him clean without cheating, which I do appreciate. He didn't need no help. He beat him clean. And he beat him in front of his family. So it was just the, it was the visual of seeing one of his family members cry because he lost. Because he... You know, he, he tried, but he couldn't get the job done. And it just shows how formidable Gunther is. He doesn't give a damn. He will beat the brakes out of you in front of your own family, man. So, but comment down below. Let me know. Uh, did you guys enjoy this episode of Monday Night Raw? Do you guys think they will set up some type of um, a uh, war games match between all the members of Judgment Day and some of the people I listed, uh, Jay, um, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and uh, uh, Cody Rhodes, do you think that's something that would happen? Would you like to see that? And they add a fifth member on each respective side. And also, are you guys even interested in seeing another rematch between Seth Rollins and Shinsuke Nakamura for the World Heavyweight Championship? Let me know down below, but I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to... 150k and I'm still young speedy YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you next one. Peace.